This video is a kimono pattern. You can use it for a cardigan. You can make it out of a sheer fabric for a gauzy outer layer. You can use it as a beach robe or a bathrobe. And you can use most any kind of fabric. The choice is yours. The blue sample is made for and shown on a half scale model who's proportioned exactly like a size 8. We'll sew that one together because you can see what's going on so well in the smaller format. It's constructed in miniature, but it will fit this model exactly the same way as one made with 45 inch fabric would fit a live size 8 adult lady. The red robe is pictured on a size 14 mannequin. This one is actual size, not half scale. It's also different in that it's made with a 58 inch wide fabric and made using a border print. I took some liberties with the directionality of the cutting so as to use the border print effectively. And with this pattern, you can usually do that. Also, I made the front bands unusually wide on the red sample. Doing this allows greater overlap for larger sizes and makes the upper neck perform in a shawl collar like way. So let's get into the pattern. First we'll do a quick overview, then some in-depth details. You're actually looking at the construction of the half size garment, but I'm going to state the numbers for a human size garment for clarity. The small size just makes it easier to get the whole thing on the table for filming. Start with a piece of fabric, the entire width of the fabric piece by the length that you want the garment to be. Include enough length to create a hem. So for example, if you want a 40 inch long robe, maybe cut it 44 inches. Now fold the edges towards the center so that the length remains the length and the long center front edges don't quite meet. There should be a five inch gap between them. The gap will soon become the back neckline. The double areas to either side of the gap will create the shoulder seams. Slip the scissors between the layers and run them down the fold, cutting either 10, 11, or 12 inches down depending on how large an armhole you want. When both sides are cut, we'll now cut some sleeves to fill those armholes. Cut two sleeves of any length you want, remembering to add some length so as to be able to hem the sleeves. If your armhole is 10 inches, cut each sleeve 20 inches wide. If it's 11, each sleeve 22 inches. And if it's 12, each sleeve should be 24 inches wide. Seam the edges of the sleeves together, each one to itself. That will become the underarm seam of the sleeve. The top edge of each sleeve will be sewn into the armhole. The only other piece we need to cut is enough binding to surround the entire center front, including the back neck. The binding may be a minimum of 4 inches wide or as much as 8 inches wide. The 4 inch option is shown on the blue. The 8 inch option is shown on the red. You may use any seam allowance that you're comfortable with, but stay consistent throughout the project. First step in the assembly is to sew the shoulder seams where we position them. Be sure to preserve that 5 inch gap and make sure that both of the slit areas stay where we put them on the very edges of the fabric, which will now be the sides of the garment. Much of this may be done on either a regular sewing machine or a serger, but I suggest that you install the sleeve using a regular sewing machine. Next, with the body of the garment inside out and the sleeve right side out, slide the sleeve into the armhole and sew it in position. We're going to come back to this and I'll show you a couple of finer points shortly. There are several ways to apply the binding to the front edge of the garment and to the back neck. It's all done in one long piece. My preference is to align all the edges, sew them all together, 
Then flip the binding outside to the edge of the garment where it's going to be and top stitch it down. But feel free to use another method if you prefer it. In cases like the red kimono, there's a selvage that must be cut off and you can do that all in one step as you apply the binding with a serger. If you don't have a serger or would rather not, it's perfectly fine to trim it by hand, then sew it together, then overcast the edge. Overcasting may be either done with the serger or a nice zigzag stitch. And finally, top stitch. To top stitch, turn all layers of the seam towards the body and stitch next to them. On this one, I'm simply going to turn under the hem for the sleeve as the selvage and stitch it down with zigzag stitching. This is hacky knit, so you can get by with that. By by with that, I mean that I used the wrong direction of the grain by traditional standards, but it's not going to do anything awful that this very square plain sleeve was cut sideways, and it'll have a nice effect. For both the sleeve and the body, you can really use any style hem you want. I'm going to turn under the body twice and stitch it, again using zigzag or whatever stitch stitch you have, but you don't want to use a plain straight stitch because if you bend over and the hem stretches, which it will in this fabric, uh, it could tear the stitching. The other example, the blue one, is not a stretch fabric, so you may use straight stitching if you want. Here is a pretend sleeve in a solid color to make it easier to see. And a pretend armhole. I'm opening the armhole. There's the bottom of the slit. There's the shoulder seam. Here's the sleeve that will fit into the armhole. But we do need to make one adjustment because this has no side seam and this does. And when we sew this sleeve into this armhole, the stitching line will be about there, making it here, not here. Normally we would match up seam allowances, but we don't have a seam allowance. Therefore, we're going to make one tiny alteration in this by running a stitching line here, creating what you could think of as a little dart, or you could think of as a tiny piece of side seam, and then the area will align perfectly. Here the necessary stitching line has been completed, starting at the same level that the slit ends, using the same seam allowance that we used for every other piece, and tapering it down to nothing on the side of the garment. Also make a snip across both layers, right at the bottom of the slit, that ends at the top of the stitching line. This will allow that seam allowance to get out of the way and not get caught in the seam and cause a pucker. Now the, seam, the sleeve is pinned into the armhole in such a way that it will be very easy to sew a completely smooth seam. Here's what the outside looks like when it's finished properly. Just as though there really was a side seam in the garment to match the underarm to. But, of course, it ends right there. Here's the finished underarm of a real garment. Now, here comes an alternate method for those who would rather not mess with the dart. Going back to the beginning of the design, we had our 45 inches or wider fabric, if you use that, going this direction. Then we fold it here and here leaving the five inches for the neckline. So now we have a fold, double layer of fabric, single layer of fabric, double layer of fabric. I didn't get that one quite to scale. Now, what we I suggested is that we slit down here. But if you would rather make a more traditional side seam and a simpler method of inserting that sleeve because you have seams all the way down, just keep cutting. 
So let's draw some scissors. Those are your cutting lines and they go all the way to here. If that's what you choose to do, here's the order of assembly. So these seams, the two layers together at the shoulder. Same as before, but in this case, these areas will be open, two whole layers of fabric. When you get done, this is what you'll have. Back neck, shoulder, shoulder. Lower edge of the front, lower edge of the back. Apply a sleeve, centering it on each seam. And make a normal seam here. Now fold along this line all the way here. Place the right sides together. You're looking at what would be the back now. If we were looking at the front, we'd see this opening down. And now you can seam the underarm and body together normally. I usually start at the body hem. So up to here, put the needle down right in this corner so that you can spin the fabric and sew down to here. And this represents the fact that there are two layers, but of course there are two layers on both sides. If you're a beginning seamstress, even though this is more work and it will make the kimono a little bit smaller, you may find this simpler than what I showed you, but to preserve the smoothness of the fabric and that extra space, you may want to do method one. Here's why you might like to stick with and learn method one, in addition to what I said. Five eighths, five divided by eighths, is 0.625 inches. When we multiply that times four, which is what we're doing, if we take 5 eighths inch traditional seam out here, it's also happening on this other layer. So that's doubling it, and it's happening two more times over here. So that's times four. We are removing two and a half inches. It doesn't seem like it would be that much at first glance, but it is, and so if we take, suppose the fabric is only 44 inches wide, minus 2.5, we end up with 41 and a half inches of usable robe circumference. And since we want it to overlap in the front, this is only going to fit very tiny ladies. And we get a couple more sizes by doing it the way I showed you first. But it's up to you. The other thing is, if you had, instead of skinny fabric, well, 44 to five inch fabric, if you were able to find 55 to 60 inch fabric, it'd be a whole different world. We'll go with the larger size. We're still gonna lose two and a half inches, but if it's 60 minus 2.5, we have still a nice generous wrap at 57 and a half. Let's discuss choosing the width of the binding or the band for a minute. This one is the minimum width. I cut it four inches wide. Of course, the band is then folded in half and seamed, so the resulting band is actually half of the original width minus a seam allowance. I used a one quarter inch seam allowance. So the finished band or binding is one and three quarters inches wide. We're zoomed in really closely now so that you can see the top stitching that makes it lay down nicely. For the red robe, I cut a really wide band, eight inches wide, so that in wear it is three and three quarters inches wide and actually adds something substantial to the overlap of the robe. The center fronts of the main part of the robe are the edges of the border print in this case. So I cut my band from another section of the fabric so as to make it contrast for some drama. The effect of a band this wide 
is to create an almost shawl collared effect. See it flipping outwards in the back? It looks drapier in the front, comes higher on the neck when the robe is wrapped, and creates a somewhat shawl collar effect in the front as well. Less tailored, but nice. Really wide bands like this one work a lot better on soft knits than they do on firm wovens. The last thing to talk about is the sash. It may be any length you want, or you may choose not to use one and let the robe hang open. But here's a way that I like to do it. This is a two inch wide sash, so I started with a four and a half inch wide piece of fabric, used quarter inch seams. I constructed this one on the serger entirely. This end still needs to be turned in and hemmed. So with the right sides together, wrong side showing, I sewed the length of this seam. Then with it still wrong side out, flattened the tube that resulted and sewed across here. Then I turned it right side out. And that means that around the lady's waist, this is what will show. Usually when you turn it right side out, you still need to use something a little bit pointy. This is a yarn needle so it won't puncture the fabric to pull these corners out square. Of course, only one end can be sewn closed from the inside. Then we tuck those cut ends in, flatten the tube, and either hand sew or top stitch across this end to finish it. If you have never made a sash before and you're not sure how long to do it, there are two things to try. Use a scrap piece of ribbon, tie it around the person into a bow that you like and find comfortable, snip it wherever the length hangs to a desirable spot, then take this off the person and measure it, and that's the length you should make your sash. An alternate method is just to use twice the waist measurement. Because you get a lot of choices in how long you make this and what size you make the sleeves, I cannot give you an exact amount of yardage, but here is an estimate of the minimum. Assuming you only want a short robe, 36 inches in length is about a minimum for the body. So that will take one whole length of fabric. 8 inches for the sleeve. If Again, it's a minimum. You might want a longer sleeve, including the hem in the 8 inches. If you are making a 10 inch or 11 inch armhole, both sleeves will fit on one width of the fabric. So that will be okay. If not, we'll look down here. The minimum band size is four inches cut, and you will need two, two widths of the fa fabric to complete them. So that's added there. And I would say the minimum width to cut your sash is three inches, and many people would rather have more than one forty-five inch width. But if you can get by with one forty-five inch, I mean length, really, to tie around the waist, and you don't want longer strings because you're a skinny mini, um, that's enough. Now, if you even if you are making everything the size shown here, except that you want a deeper armhole, you will need another 8 inches. So, 55 inches minimum, minimum, minimum. That's 1.53 yards. To add the second sleeve, if you're making a 12-inch armhole, you'll need an additional 8 inches, a minimum of 1.75 yards. And you would add inches if you want a wider sash or wider bands or an additional length of sash. If you want a full length rope, obviously 36 inches is just above knee length on most women. And remember that we're including the hem there. So it's considerably above knee length. It's a short robe. So the way you would figure for a longer robe is your shoulder measurement to the length you want plus however much you want to allow for the hem is your body length and then add all these things. If you want longer sleeves, you'll need to add on. But these, are, these give you something to work with. 
I would never in a million years recommend you buy the absolute minimum of fabric. What if it's not cut perfectly? What if you need to match a pattern, like in a plaid or stripes? Um, you want a little wiggle room, so don't be too chintzy. Okay, you're all set now. Off you go to raid your fabric stash and sew yourself a nice kimono.